Hello guys, Tough HD here and welcome back to another video and today I will be doing an unboxing and setup of this. This is a 3.5 inch USB 3.0 SATA 3 hard drive enclosure by a make I believe is pronounced RSH Tech. Now I've actually got two of these for an upcoming project but today we will just be taking a look at one of them because the setup will be just the same for the both of them. So on the front we've got a picture of the item. It looks like it will be some sort of brushed metal look which will go nicely with the Mac Mini I'm going to connect these to. And there's also some specs on here. This can support drives up to 16 terabytes in capacity. It supports three and a half inch hard drives although I'm sure it will also fit two and a half inch ones if you so desire, and also SATA 3, six gigabit per second. On the back there is some more information as well. It also tells you how to use it. So we plug it in over USB to the computer, and then we also have to power the drive independently as well. But now let's take this out of its box. It's just in a sleeve, so I will take that off move it off to the sides and then we should be able to open up this box. It opens up from the front by the looks of it, just like that. Lifting it up, the first thing I can see is the instruction manual. I'm guessing this will be quite straightforward to set up, so hopefully we won't need to use that, although I'll put it off to the side just in case anyway. And the box is the perfect size just to fit the device in there. So I'll put that off to the side, we'll take a look in a minute, and in here, yep, this is where the rest of the items are. So we get a little card here telling us to register, and if we register we will get some extra warranty or something like that. That is quite nice. We get a little screwdriver here. This will be helpful for installing the drives because I'm guessing they will need to be screwed in to be secure. Very nice that they do include that. Here is the USB cable. This is of course USB 3. This is a type B to type A cable. Type A in your computer, type B in the back of the enclosure. I'm guessing this cable is probably about a meter in length. Next we get a little plastic stand. This is what the drive can sit in. You can either have it horizontal or sticking upright. If you want it upright you can put it in there so it stays nice and secure and doesn't fall over. Very nice. Next we get four little screws. These will be the ones we use to install the drive. And finally we get the power cable in here. Luckily this is a UK power cable, of course I am in the UK, so it's nice that the right one has been included. And that is it for inside the box. Let's now take a look at the enclosure itself. Okay, so the enclosure is here inside this little plastic bag, and there it is. Quite simply, here is the enclosure. It is metal, like I thought it would be. It's quite a dark silver, almost a grey colour. This is the sort of silver that Apple products usually are, so if we look at that, it's not the same, but it should still go quite nicely. I wasn't sure if it would match. It doesn't match, but I do quite like the grey look on this thing. So the front of this is plastic and it's got ventilation so the drive can stay cool. On the side is the brand name and it also says some of the specs on it. On the back we've got a power button there. We've got LEDs, I'm guessing, saying when it's powered and when the drive is active. That's where we plug in our USB and that's where the DC power will go. There's also some more information written on there and there's also two screw holes there. So now let's open this up and install one of our drives. So it's very easy to open this thing up to put the drive in. I'm, there, I'm at the back end here and simply pull and it slides out and the drive will just go in here. So I'll move the metal casing off to the side and I will bring over one of my drives. This is a Seagate Iron Wolf 4 terabyte drive. Now you could put any drive you wanted in here. This is out of my RAID enclosure, I'm not using that anymore, so I'm going to be repurposing both of the drives. One of them will be going in this enclosure, and the other will be going in the other identical enclosure 
which I bought as well. So to put this in, the SATA connectors are at the back. I'm going to make sure I put the drive in the correct way. I'm guessing I just need to slide that along until the connectors make contact. So if I push, now the drive is connected to the SATA ports in the back of there. So we can turn the drive over now, get out our bag of screws as well as the little screwdriver and we can put the four screws in. So before we install the drive with the screws, it's important to note that there are two different sizes. There are two long ones and two short ones. The shorter screws straight away need to go into this hole here as well as that one and then the longer screws go into the other two holes but don't install those yet only install them once the casing is back on because it will hold on both the casing and the drive so now let's do that okay so first off let's install the short screws as i said it goes in the holes which have a wider gap around them so let's now do that and just like that, both of those screws are now in. And to put the longer screws in, we are going to slide the metal casing back on. And then in there, I can see the two screw threads. And then we can just screw in the two longer screws in there. Not only will that attach the drive to the mount, it's also going to hold on the casing so it doesn't just slide off. So quite simply, these two just need to screw in and just like that that is now done and we can plug this thing in and hopefully it will work so before i plug it in i thought i would show you the little stand so of course you can put the drive down like that if you want to or you can have it upright to save space now you could risk just putting it like that but it may fall over. So they include this little plastic stand. When you put it in there, it makes it a bit more sturdy and I think that also looks pretty cool. So I will be using this. Now, not only does it stop it falling over, it also lifts the drive off the desk ever so slightly and that might help with vibration noise also. All right, so I'm now ready to connect this to my computer. So I'm going to get the USB cable, plug that in, just like that and I'll also get the power and that just plugs in just like that and whenever we're ready we can press the power button. Okay so I'm going to be using this connected to a Mac not this particular Mac but this one is easier for me to film so this is what we will be doing this only if you want to use it on a Windows computer you can do that if you want. Now if the drive you are using is brand new and hasn't been formatted yet we will need to format it. I think I might have to format this one because it has previously been in a RAID enclosure. So I'll show you how to format a drive on Mac OS. But if you're doing this on Windows, there are plenty of videos to show you how to do that if you want. So I'm going to turn on power to the drive. It is all connected up. So I'm now going to press the power button on the back of the unit and hopefully it should turn on. All right, so the drive is now on and it looks like it has shown up on my desktop already with some files on it. So it looks like taking it out of my RAID enclosure hasn't actually meant I need to format it. However, I am going to show you how you would do that anyway. So we are going to go into disk utility and then we can go down to the drive and then we can just click erase and go through with that if you want and you can also change the format on here as well although i'm not going to do it because i will need to check through the data to make sure it is all fine but that is how you would do that and it's showing up absolutely as it should do so it looks like this thing is now working and if i show you the back of the unit you can see that there is a red power light as well as a blinking blue light showing that the hard drive is doing things so that is it for this video thank you very much for watching the unboxing and setup of this device looks like it's working just fine so i will now go and set up the other one off camera so thank you very much for watching Hopefully this is interesting and helpful in some way and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.